The next thing that I want to run through one more time are short run aggregate supply determinants. So we're still talking about aggregate supply. The SR is the short run. Now, we've looked at short run aggregate supply before. This is the one that we did that had the Keynesian regions where you go up like this, you have flat, you have um, upward sloping, and then you have vertical. Okay, so that's the curve that we're looking at. By determinants, we need those factors that determine where aggregate supply sits on this graph or the things that can shift it to the right or to the left. One of the things that we already talked about was the supply side economics really has not worked in the past, that any government efforts to push this curve continuously to the right have been foiled by a number of other factors kind of getting in the way. So what are some things that may actually impact what happens with this curve? One of them, and this is a big one, would be the cost of inputs. Your inputs are the things that you put into your production process. For example, energy costs would be one that you will probably see in multiple choice questions. It's the most common one that, that I see in the literature that I run across. If you see the term negative supply shock, we're talking about an unexpected dramatic increase in the cost of an input that pushes aggregate supply to the left. So, cost of inputs. If it is cheaper and easier to produce, going back to what we talked about in Unit 1, cheaper and easier to produce, you'll produce more. Aggregate supply shifts to the right. If it gets more difficult and or more expensive, it shifts left. Increase, decrease. Okay, so that's the first one. The second factor would be a change in productivity. A change in productivity. Now, what does the term productivity mean? What it actually looks at is the output that you get versus the amount of the input that you're putting in. Now, for example, American workers, some of the most productive in the world. So, looking at inputs versus outputs. Let's say, for example, that we can replace a worker with a robot that lowers your per unit cost of production and can work twice as fast. Okay? If you get twice as many outputs from something that's the same price for the input, you double your productivity. That's good. That means that aggregate supply would increase. Is it possible to have a reduction in productivity? Sure it is. You know, if this robot that doubles your output is deemed to be unsafe, and the government says, oh no, you can't use that anymore, your productivity just drops back. I can think of an awful lot of people I've worked with over the years who contributed to a reduction in productivity. Yeah, it happens. All right, and one of the questions that was asked in class today was about Henry Ford, the $5 day with the efficiency wage. Here's how you can look at it. Yes, it raised the cost of an input. It raised the cost of his labor. But by having workers who actually showed up every day, he did not have turnover in his workers, didn't have to constantly train people who showed up for a few days and never came back to the plant. Lowered his turnover, made his workers a lot more reliable. Higher cost of inputs, but the output jumped up by leaps and bounds. So that's the value in an efficiency wage. By paying workers above what they think the job is worth, it makes the job worth a lot more to them, and they tend to work a lot harder, which jumps up your output even if it costs you more money. So that makes for productive workers. So if we increase our productivity, aggregate supply increases. If we decrease it, then it's going to slide to the left. Another thing that can impact productivity is technology. If by giving your workers better and faster technology, it makes your process more productive, then that can lower your per unit cost for input, and that can cause aggregate supply to shift to the right also. 
So, technology we could put up here as a third factor, but you don't have to because when you think about it, it changes your productivity and it can make your inputs cheaper. So I don't think we need to list that separately because one and two are both true of a new technological process in production. Okay, so those are the first two. Now, the third one, and this is kind of one of those big umbrella type concepts, the legal institutional environment. What does that mean in practical terms? Virtually nothing. But let's break that down into a couple of categories that we can actually work with. Taxes, subsidies, and regulation. Now, again, if it's cheaper and easier to produce, you will see an increase in production. And if it gets more expensive and more difficult to produce, you'll see a drop. So, if we lower business taxes, lower the corporate income tax, could that perhaps push aggregate supply to the right? It could. If we offer businesses subsidies, that means that we pay you to be engaged in certain productions. Um, let's say, for example, that the government is pushing green technologies and they offer subsidies to businesses that are researching and developing and working on green technologies. That's happening in different parts of the world. I give you a pile of cash, woohoo, just got cheaper for you to be in business. You're going to increase your production of what you're doing. Now, for regulation, this one can get a little bit weird. In general, when you see deregulation of an industry that opens up the door to more competition, we see aggregate supply increase. If the government cracks down and you know pushes people out of the market, then you can see aggregate supply decrease. Something like a minimum wage regulation can also have an impact in that. Um, because that falls into this regulation idea, but also affects the cost of your inputs and can also affect your productivity. So there are some kind of spillover concepts here where these are cross-pollinating each other. I think that the best thing you can do instead of trying to memorize the directions for all this stuff is just keep in mind the basic rule that I've told you over and over again. Cheaper and easier, increase more expensive and more difficult decrease. That's your key.